Hi, this is Shady and today I'm gonna talk about Kosei in a way and specifically his life struggles. Uh, I found a few more information about him, uh, a few more quotes and uh, a little bit of background story to what happened. Uh, all the stuff that had contributed to his very tough road as a competitive judoka. Now, I've talked about Kosei in a way several times on this channel. Uh, analyzing techniques, uh, talking about his hidden techniques, his hidden teachings, uh, a judoka profile episode, the first ever episode was about him. Uh, I talked about how uh, he continued to fight on despite injuries, etc. as like a samurai, but uh, today I was reading an article and I will link it down below as I was just doing my research and it's a very lengthy article but it sheds far more light on Kosei in a way that I ever knew and today I will be talking a little bit from that article and also describing his competitive career and how it was shortened due to life events so we all know that Kosei in a way started judo back when he was five years old it was uh, due to his father his father truly encouraged him and his mother as well he was very disciplined he was always there uh, up to the fact that even just six months into his judo training he was already uh, collecting gold medals judo. so just five years old he was already competing and winning gold um, back when he was 16 years old so before the whole triple world champion and olympic title came uh, martin Ahrens, the european champion said uh, i remember the first time i saw him uh, he was like an elephant in a living room going to Sagami private school and raised under the legendary Kazukata Hayashida, Nobuyuki Sato and Yasuhiro Yamashita. If you don't know, Yasuhiro Yamashita is a judo legend that I made a judoka profile on. I will link it for your convenience. Uh, he continues to say his Uchimata, Ochigari and Osotogari were already lethal no matter the age and pedigree of his opponent, ultimately it was Keiji Suzuki, protege of Hitoshi Saito, uh, that won the world title in 1998 in the junior uh, before Kosei's emergence. Uh, so, uh, which is something that I find very interesting that Kosei in a way was under Yamashita's wing and Keiji Suzuki was under Hitoshi Saito's wing and those two, the trainers, had their rivalry between themselves and also Kosei and Keiji Suzuki had their own bit of back and forth and very interesting matches so I thought that very uh, interesting to see and uh, uh, also he continues to say in a way his perfect technique has often been praised but he was first and foremost an athlete with exceptional physical abilities. Have you seen many others who would defeat giants like Nicholas Gill, uh, Le Maire or Stéphane Trenou like he did? Uh, if you go and see him on the Olympic podium, you would see that he's surrounded by just giant men that he threw all with ease with an Uchimata. So, uh, as we all know that he is the Olympic champion on the Olympic stage of Sydney back in the year 2000 but after that uh, his life started to go downhill a little bit so uh, just a year before the Olympics at the age of 21 Kosei Inoue's mother died at the station of the cross after Athens would only get more difficult uh, first on a physical level a tear in the right pectoral muscle at the end of Kano Cup, if you remember, I've talked about this multiple times. He was against Yuri Ryback of Belarus. So even though he had a torn pectoral muscle, he kept on the match. It was the finals. He got that Ken Ken Ochiyari and hopped all across the mat and got uh, the gold medal. But sadly, that tear cost him a year and a half of his competitive career. Not only that, but also just to recover mentally and physically from it. He said that uh, if, if he would like hold up a kilogram, it, it would feel like a hundred kilogram. That how much weak he became from that injury. It was truly a devastating injury. Uh, but not only that, 
uh, on June 16th, uh, 2005. So just uh, soon or like around the time of that injury, uh, his older brother passed away. It was a brutal loss. Uh, he was 32 years old, the older brother. And uh, he said in an interview uh, of L'Esprit du Judo or Judo Spirit, he said, and I quote, Before that, I'd say a little prayer before stepping on a mat. Not anymore. At his funeral, I thought, no more gods. End quote. Uh, so it really shows how devastating his loss was. First of all, his mother and then his older brother. So much so that he lost his faith. Uh, in gods and, and the universe and just basically everything and it truly hit him uh, in the heart straight and still he kept on going uh, he tried to recover from his uh, injury and also tried to uh, realize his dream to go to the Beijing Olympics uh, he continues to say uh, Yamashita sensei says the problem isn't our lives but the way we live it so he said that even though this is happening to me, uh, I have to be on the right in the right mindset to continue. It's how I live my life, and it's not what happens to me. So this is very much important, and it really shows the samurai spirit of Kose in a way. And uh, I only saw this, uh, and I talked to you about this just from his performance on the mats. But now that I have a little bit more insight on it, it really shows how big his heart was and how uh, strong his will uh, was so in 2007 he came back on the uh, grandest stage like the paris grand slam we all know how big it is and he won in the plus 100 kilos so not only he came back but also uh, chose a bigger challenge and that is the plus 100 before he was in the minus 100 so again it shows how much of an extraordinary man he is um, so he would still uh, go on and try to go for the world championship uh, and he even defeated Yuri Ryback again with an Ochigari and then went up in the semi-finals against 17 year old Teddy Rene and that giant you see here in front of you was just 17 the match went into uh, a golden score and there he was defeated by a quote-unquote coca it was a very controversial uh, victory for Teddy Rene um, so it was I believe Rio de Janeiro if I'm not mistaken uh, so it was like a kind of a, a loss and also it was it, it showed that it wasn't you know easy to come back and there was a lot of new talent uh, Teddy Rene was emerging he was 17 years old uh, so in the December of uh, that same year uh, 2007 he lost the Kano Cup by uh, Shido against Satoshi Ishii uh, and in 2008 he was trying to defend his uh, Paris title but uh, a few weeks earlier in January he got married so now we know a little bit more is that not only the losses but also his personal life his intimate life getting married he got married to a model called Aki Higashihara uh, three weeks earlier to the uh, Paris 2008 and it really affected his judo he was still in the uh, marriage ambience if you want or atmosphere but there he uh, kind of went on and but still uh, lost a second time due to uh, Teddy Rene in the second round um, it was just uh, how do you say uh, like a golden score it was a coca uh, not the first one I'm sorry the first one was in the world championship it was uh, like a reversal it was different uh, this is the coca uh, it, it was golden score you see here in front of you so uh, I'm sorry I got the two events mixed up but it was both against Teddy Rene so uh, Teddy was 18 years old and uh, still he beat him a second time but this time it was early on in the uh, uh, how do you say the competition but uh, we see here that he uh, was defeated but uh, it says in the article that 
he was walking alone in the underground corridors connecting the arena to the warm-up mat. He was in tears, inconsolable, and he suddenly looked a thousand years old. His dream of winning back his honor lost in Athens by winning in Beijing plus 100 was still alive. So uh, it really shows also how he was eliminated uh, by Van der Geest in the quarterfinal in Athens, how much it truly affected him. It says his honor. So he truly takes winning very seriously. And it's not just, oh, it's like a sports career. I make money and uh, uh, fame people notice me. No, it was his his honor to win. It, he took every win or loss very personal. He was crying uh, on the uh, in the corridors. He felt very old because he was defeated by a younger uh, man, 11 years younger than him, and it truly put a lot of strain on him. So it truly really shows how personally he took basically everything. And then two months later, uh, at the Zen Nihon, he went up against Yohei Takai, and he was uh, put in an Osaikomi, which sealed his career, his fate forever. Just like the triple Olympic champion uh, Tadahiro Nomura, uh, he lost his dream and his fate was ended on the mat. So, uh, kind of like a samurai, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. It's a very uh, long and lengthy article, I will link it down below. Uh, there's so much about him, stuff that I already covered in other videos, but this, like uh, how he... Uh, lost faith and you know just walking behind the scenes of the mat and crying and still he was trying to defend his honor and uh, he went up against the giants and still trying to make his uh, olympic dream again and you know regain his quote-unquote honor it not only shows his character but also uh, his culture uh, I talked about making parents proud and honoring them, like in the case of Joshiro Maruyama. He said he was world champion, but until he steps on the Olympic stage, he still hasn't made his father proud because his father was an Olympian. So uh, it's really hard to read these things and, uh, you know, see how much they struggled for honor and making family proud and themselves proud. but. At the same time, this is what makes them champions and this is what makes them legends in this sport uh, that we now have and they will forever be immortalized as one of the best and they, we will tell their stories forever basically and it's because of this, the, the not I don't want to say stress, but the, uh, the importance of winning and going all out on the mat is important for them and that's why uh, it is crucial to have these, you know, offensive mindset, samurai mindset, and just going and giving it your all on the mats. And because you gave it your all on the mats, you are you have the right to be sad in, just in case you lost because you, you cannot win every day. You just cannot. And that's the story of behind the scenes of Kosei in a way of uh, marriage, family loss, and also just personal pride and personal honor and going to go and win the gold and bringing it back home for your family and for yourself. Um, this was Shadi and thank you for listening.